I'm gonna tell you about the nine studying mistakes I did in my first semester and what you should do instead. I sucked in my first semester. I had bad grades and even failed an exam. But I have learned from those mistakes and I'm now amongst the best students in my program at the Technical University of Munich. The following is just my experience. You have to decide for yourself what works for you, but here are my nine biggest studying mistakes that I wish I had known earlier about. The first one is obvious, but there are other tips that are not that obvious and that you might have not not spend so much thoughts on. Just doing what has worked before, but putting more time into it. This is exactly what I was doing. In school my grades were good, so why not stick to the way I was used to studying? Probably the single biggest mistake ever in human mankind. Because I had no methods or study techniques at all. Looking back it was like I was trying to climb a huge wall while ignoring the ladder right next to me. Just because something has worked before doesn't mean that it was efficient or useful. I had to learn it the hard way and even though I had put many hours in failed an exam. I was attending each class, doing the exercises, and when I came home I read through the lecture again and maybe tried to summarize it. I made the same mistakes for two more semesters, which was simply not efficient. So do yourself the favor and do this instead. Do research on how to study in an efficient way. If this is the first time you do research about it, this is going to be very interesting and you will see how much there is to learn. It will save you a ton of hours in the long run. Ask other students how they study. Maybe you will even find students that are a year ahead of you and give you tips for the classes that you still have to attend. Studying only before the exam. In school I went to class but I would only study if there was an exam in the next two or three days. And this became a habit that really crushed me in my first semester at university. I even realized that the exam might be harder at university so I started studying a week before my first exam. <laughs> So smart, right? Spoiler, this was not enough. Do this instead. Don't wait until the exams are approaching. Study continuously during the whole semester. You might think this is pointless because you will forget whatever you have studied by the time the exam takes place, but that's not exactly how it is. Think of it like playing piano. Let's say you have practiced a song, but then you went on to other songs. Six months later, you want to play the first song again, but of course you have forgotten how to play it and you make some mistakes and are not able to play it as perfectly as you did before. But you will notice that it takes you only a little bit of time to bring it back to playing it perfectly again as you were to do it before. It's very similar with studying. When you study something in the beginning of the semester, you might not be able to retrieve the information after a while, but when you prepare for the exam, it is much easier to bring the memory of it back than studying it for the first time. Studying as early as possible will also make the exam season way more relaxing than it would be if you had to pull all nighters for one month straight. Writing summaries. I used to write summaries, but <laughs> not in school. You did not think that I was that organized did you? But in the first semester at university I started summarizing and of course I learned something while going through the lectures and writing everything down but I still wasted a lot of time. I was just bluntly writing down what was written on the pages and trying to write it more concise and in small letters on a sheet of paper. And I spent so much time trying to make the summary look as good as possible. I was wasting so much time not only because my handwriting was a mess and it would not look good if even if I tried but also because summaries simply don't work because while writing summaries you don't actually learn much. Do this instead. I personally skipped writing summaries two semesters ago and it has saved me a lot of time. Except for two classes where I still think it made sense, but I also might be wrong. Anyway, try to save the time and instead of writing, already start studying. How you might ask, this will be one of the next tips. Trusting my gut on what to study. This did definitely not work out the way I wanted it to. I just studied and skipped back and forth depending on what I thought I should be studying. But the decisions I made were not based on anything. I would just sit down, think about which class I want to study and then do it. But that led to me studying only the easier parts. Because after the easier parts, I would feel accomplished. While if I would struggle on a hard exercise, this would make me frustrated. Later on, I made study plans. So I would split up the content of a lecture and distribute it equally over the course of the semester. While this was better than having no system at all, it is still not an effective approach to studying. Because there might be one class that I already have a lot of knowledge and understood everything and another one where I'm completely lost. Following my study plan, I would spend equal amounts of time for both parts. Even though it might make more sense to focus only on the class where I don't know anything. So this also does 
does not work very good. Do this instead. List all of the classes you have in the semester, then create a table for each class. In the left column of each row, write down the different topics that the class covers. I personally do everything in Notion, but you can also use an Excel spreadsheet or a sheet of paper. Whenever you review a topic, think of how good you were able to reproduce the content or how good you were able to solve the questions. Then write the date of the day when you reviewed the topic in the spreadsheet next to the topic that you reviewed. Use red if it was very hard and you did not know much. Use yellow if it was okay-ish and green if you were able to retrieve the information very good and complete. You will do this whenever you study or review a topic and therefore you will be able to see in which areas you lack and which topics you have not reviewed for a long time. I also write down what exact parts I was not able to reproduce or solve so that I know even more detailed what I should pay attention to the next time. Studying whenever it feels right and expecting to study all day long. Back then I just studied whenever it felt right. I thought that when I was a bit unmotivated I could still do something in the afternoon or evening. And when I had some time left in the day I felt the urge to study because I would feel guilty if I did not study the whole day. I wanted to be good in my studies and thought I had to study all day long like you see it in many other study videos. This did not work out for me because I wasted a lot of time in the mornings where I did nothing but scroll social media. I knew I would be studying for the rest of the day anyway and that this would be exhausting. If I wanted to study one part of the lesson I postponed it until it was so late in the day that I had to do it but I did not use the time before that for relaxing or anything that brought me joy or at least I could have had much more fun in another way. This is what I do now. I decide on a time during the day that I want to be finished with all of university. For me it is lunch but you can choose whatever time fits for you. Therefore I must do everything before lunch. This deadline creates a bit of pressure and I know that when I wake up that I have to start studying because after all I have only time to finish everything before this deadline. This might seem a bit stressful but I actually get so much more done with this deadline because if I've only limited time to study I have to study very efficient and don't allow for many distractions. This deadline created pressure for me to think about my study system and learn about studying techniques. While the deadline might seem like I'm giving up freedom, in reality I get so much freedom from this. In the afternoons and evenings every day I can do whatever I want without feeling guilty because I have already studied this day. Before I had a deadline I was feeling guilty and had less free time. Sure it's a bit strict but now I have much more free time than I had ever before. Multitasking. Multitasking sounds good. You get two things done at the same time. I did this a lot, studying while watching Netflix or cooking a meal or quickly answering the incoming text messages. You probably know that this is stupid, but I was stupid back then. Multitasking is basically a myth. There is no such thing as doing two things at the same time. When you multitask, what you're actually doing is switching your attention many times between different things. But whenever you switch from studying to replying to a text and then switching back to studying, your brain has to readjust and load the context back in your brain. The switch costs you a lot of time and effort. Do this instead. Don't multitask. Concentrate on only studying. To do this, it is helpful to get rid of any distraction. The obvious one is your phone. Switch it to silent mode and put it away. And I don't mean put it on your table, but instead put it in another room or a drawer. It has to be out of sight and out of mind. I also don't listen to music because then I often find myself paying attention to the lyrics or remembering an event where I heard the song for the last time. The only time I listen to music is sometimes when I'm not in a good mood and need some change. Then I type in focus music in YouTube and listen to that. Basically no melody and no lyrics at all. A bit boring but that's the reason I listen to it. I also make sure to have a clean desk. Therefore no item can trigger my mind to drift off. Of course I drift off but at least less frequently. I also don't have anything in front of my desk that I could be distracted by. Those Pinterest posts with aesthetic desk setups and pictures in front of you might look nice but it would not help me to focus. Doing what is easy. Passive methods. I still fall into that trap on a regular basis. Let's say I have two math exercises. One where I know I'm able to solve it and one where I know I will struggle. It is tempting to just do the simple one and feel accomplished but you know the harder exercise would be the one you should do. The same holds true for passive studying methods. These are more easy but are scientifically proven to bring lower results. What are passive methods? Things like reading or listening. You basically get the information from outside and don't interact with it. Do this instead. First of all instead of choosing the easy one choose the harder task the one where you will struggle. And so remember the spreadsheet and look for the parts that were hard to solve the last time you did it. Regarding active versus passive study 
studying methods. Think of your brain like a muscle. If you only go for a walk, you will not do any harm, but you will also not progress that much. But if you do an intense workout, that is when your muscle will grow. While in theory, the brain is not a muscle, the same still holds true for the brain. While reading and listening to content is not necessarily bad, it is not efficient. There's also the trap of thinking that you know the content because you recognize it and understand it. But it is a completely other thing to then sit in an exam and reproduce the content without any clues that you get from outside. This is when I would ask myself after the exam why I did not know anything while sitting in an exam. But when I opened the slides of the lecture, I knew instantly what the professor wanted me to write on the question. So rely more on active studying methods where you have to actively retrieve information. Active methods are discussions, practice tests and exercises, as well as teaching others. The two most important keywords here are active recall and spaced repetition, which in short means that you actively retrieve information from your brain without external help and doing this again and again after a while so that you don't forget about it and transfer it into the long-term memory. I use Anki for studying because this combines both active recall and spaced repetition. There will be more studying videos where I will explain efficient studying techniques, how to focus, avoid distractions and more. Refusing to get help. In my first semester I did not want others to think that I'm dumb or stupid. So when I had questions I hesitated to ask and I did not want to show my weaknesses. Looking back, that was actually pretty dumb. <laughs> Do this instead. Ask other people when you're stuck with something. I mean, you would also be happily willing to help others, so others will also be happy to help you. If you work together with others, this is a win-win for everyone. Maybe there's one time you know more and you can explain your friends something. Maybe there's another time where your friends know more than you do and they explain you something. To each person, it's now less effort than just teaching themselves everything on their own. You can also ask the professors and the tutors. Like, don't be shy. If you think about it, they literally get paid for teaching you, so ask them if you have questions. And before we come to the last mistake, which is one of the worst mistakes I made, a quick bonus tip. My friend Chi Chi knows how important it is to work together with other students. He made a video about how to survive the first semester. One of the biggest mistakes you can make is not to check his video out. I've linked his video in the description. But now, the last mistake. Not looking for old exams. Back then, I did not listen to older students that told me how exams were and how to get good results. I did not look for old exams because after all, it felt like cheating. Do this instead. Definitely look for practice tests and old exams and ask other students what the exam will be like or if they have any tips. This is one of the most helpful information you can get and yes, it is also about studying and learning for your future career but the system is structured in a way that you don't get the best results if you know much but if you're able to answer the questions in exam. I hope this was helpful. Keep growing. This is only the beginning.